Hello everyone, welcome to Aryan Tutorials on Engineering Mechanics and in this video lecture I am going to explain about how to derive an equation for centrifugal tension in a belt and the maximum tension in a belt in a belt drive system. Okay, so let us go to the derivation part for the centrifugal tension and as well as maximum tension. So first we try to discuss about centrifugal tension in belt. So this centrifugal tension can be defined as it is a tension in a belt due to centrifugal force that means here whenever the belt rotates over the pulley that means when it moves over the pulley when it moves with respect to the pulley it can experience certain centrifugal force which acts away from the axis of the rotation or center of the rotation so due to that force whatever the tension it is experiencing in the belt that tension is called as here tension centrifugal tension in the belt here okay so assume uh, to understand the centrifugal force uh, a particular uh, elemental mass m is rotating with respect to a particular center so when it is rotating it can experience certain force which uh, acts away from the center of the uh, axis of rotation so that force uh, is called as your centrifugal force and during its rotation from one location to another location at each and every point it can experience certain force which acts away from the axis of rotation so that force here it is called as centrifugal force so that same centrifugal force can be experienced by the belt also so when the belt moves over the pulley each and every elemental area of the uh, belt can have particular mass so when it rotates over the pulley it can also experience certain force uh, which acts away from the center of the rotation of the pulley here so that we are assuming as pc here so due to this pc what happens in the belt means here this centrifugal force increases the tension in the belt in tight side and as well as the slack side okay now so because uh, the pulley is rotating over the two driven and uh, driver driver and driven pulleys so when it rotates on both sides it can experience uh, uh, this uh, tension uh, which is the centrifugal tension here so due to that centrifugal tension uh, uh, there is an increase in the tension of the belt to takes place so first initially we try to find the what is the centrifugal tension will be taking place in the belt due to this centrifugal force pc okay so for that try to assume small elemental strip uh, which is having a theta that is sorry angle d theta okay and uh, assume the uh, tensions at a and b points of the elemental strip as tc both will be same because these two are produced due to the same centrifugal force that is pc here okay so we try to write these elements separately so centrifugal force is equal to pc we have assumed and next the elemental strip as d theta and next the center uh, mass of the belt per unit length is equal to m okay so here the mass of the element we need to consider when we try to find the centrifugal force so for that assume the mass of the belt per unit length okay so much the length you are considering up to part that particular length if you want to find out the mass we have to use this element which is the mass of the belt per unit length so that i have assumed as m and the next element the centrifugal tension tc already we have assumed and next the radius of the belt assume as r okay so the radius of the uh, belt means here uh, radius of uh, uh, pulley here so pulley can be equal to the radius of the belt only so assume it is as r okay and then we can write the equation of length of the belt so length of the belt how can we write it as up to the elemental strip we have assumed so the length of the belt is equal to we can write it as whatever the radius r we have assumed into d theta okay now that means arc length we are finding in the form of angle into radius of that arc so the length of the belt becomes r into d theta so from this again we can write the mass of the belt a b so mass of the belt how can we write it as already we know the mass of the belt per unit length so if you want to find out the mass of the belt up to a b so that can be written as mass of the belt per unit length into how much the length it is having per unit length the length will be cancelled then ultimately we'll be getting the mass of the ab so this mass of the belt ab is equal to can be written as mass per unit length into what is the length of the uh, belt part you are considering that is ab okay na? so then uh, already we have assumed small m mass per unit length into length we got r into d theta so this is the equation for mass of the belt that is ab part here m into r theta keep aside this one and next we go for 
centrifugal force pc so that centrifugal force pc generally for any particular mass element we can write it as mv square by r okay if you are considering just now initially we assumed one particular elemental mass is rotating with a particular central axis so that uh, whatever the centrifugal force it can experience that can be written as mass of that elemental uh, uh, component we have assumed into velocity square by r so pc is equal to mv square bar is mv square by r is the general formula to find out the centrifugal force okay so here mass is equal to we got the formula as m into r d theta so uh, try to substitute here that is equal to m into r data into v square by r then r r gets cancels here okay then remaining equation is m into d theta v square so again try to keep this equation aside next we go for finding uh, the horizontal forces okay so we need to consider the horizontal forces to apply the equilibrium condition here okay so when you consider the horizontal forces here one horizontal force is acting which is already centrifugal force pc and at the same time this tc can be resolved into two components okay horizontal and vertical and below also horizontal and vertical two tensions two points we have considered so two tensions we need to consider those can be balanced by this centrifugal force pc here okay so uh, by assuming the angle is d theta by 2 how it could be d theta by 2 means here this uh, elemental strip which is having d theta so then half of the angle is d theta by 2 similarly the angle between tc and the vertical component becomes d theta by 2 how it could be means again by considering the uh, perpendicular uh, lines theorem here so how can you say that means this vertical line is perpendicular to this axis and this uh, tc line is perpendicular to the elemental strip so automatically this angle between uh, this uh, line and the axis is d theta by 2 similarly this angle also becomes d theta by 2 so that according to the perpendicular lines here so with the help of this d theta by 2 d theta by 2 we can write the horizontal component as the same thing here below also so the horizontal component we can write it as tc sin d theta by 2 as uh, this vertical component becomes dc sorry tc cos d theta by 2 uh, that is not required here so we try to represent only horizontal components why because we are considering the horizontal forces okay so according to the equilibrium condition here this pc force can be balanced by these two okay then pc is equal to we can write it as these two uh, terms are same so when you consider these two this one plus this one means it becomes 2 into tc sin d theta by 2 we can write it as 2 into tc sin d theta by 2 okay so pc is equal to we got like this and already we know the pc formula is m d theta v square we try to substitute. Oh. okay before that uh, we need to modify the equation as d theta by 2 is very small then sin d theta by 2 is equal to we can write it as d theta by 2 only okay then now try to modify this equation in place of pc write m d theta v square that is equal to we can write it as 2 tc d theta by 2 okay sin d theta by 2 become equal became equal d theta by 2 so we can write it as 2 tc into d theta by 2 here 2 2 gets cancelled and again the d theta left side and right side gets cancelled then finally we'll get mv square is equal to tc okay this is the required equation tc is equal to mv square which is the centrifugal tension will be acting in the belt okay according to its mass and the velocity that is the linear velocity it is maintaining during the rotational speed here at any particular point okay so this is the final equation we'll get by deriving by the derivation here that is centrifugal tension tc is equal to mass into velocity square so remember this equation very very important so now the derivation of the centrifugal tension in the belt is over next we try to derive an equation for the maximum tension in the belt so how to derive the maximum tension in the belt means here for that we need to assume let maximum stress as equal to sigma and the width of the belt as b and the thickness of the belt as t then the maximum stress uh, we can write the formula as tension force that is the maximum tension force by the area here b into d okay then the maximum tension force uh, we can assume it as t assume as a t here then by area as it is write down as it is write down bt okay then t is equal to we can write it as sigma into b into t 
okay so this is the equation for the maximum tension in the belt when we know the maximum stress in the belt and the area of the belt cross sectional area of the belt we can find out the maximum tension in the belt here so when you consider the maximum tension automatically the maximum tension will be taking place inside the tight side only okay that can be equal to again here uh, tension in the tight side okay the maximum tension in the tight side or maximum tension in the belt is equal to sigma b into t we can write it as okay i hope you understand this simple derivation part for the uh, tension in the belt and the maximum tension in the belt if you still have any doubts please feel free to give a comment to my video so that i'll try i'll try to clarify your doubts once again thanks for watching my video thank you all